Hello and welcome back to Handheld Computing. So as some of you will know from following my channel, I recently acquired a Toshiba Libretto 50CT, this cute little device from 1997. At some point I'll do a full review, but at the moment we're just going to have a quick look. But more importantly, we're going to swap out the 20 odd year old hard disk for a compact flash card, as this disk could die at any time. A big thanks goes to Ian from Runcorn, who I got the libretto off, and without who, this video wouldn't get made. The Toshiba Libretto 50CT is one of the earlier UMPCs. There were others, but they mainly ran DOS and not a more user-friendly operating system like Windows 95. There is some confusion over the exact specs of the 50CT. In fact, when looking online to do a little bit of research, I found the CPU speeds quoted at 166 MHz, 75 MHz, 50 megahertz and one article suggesting it's actually a 120 megahertz chip running at 75 megahertz. In reality it appears that the Japanese version had a 50 megahertz CPU and that the international release had a 75 megahertz CPU which could easily be overclocked to 100 megahertz and more if you're willing to try it. Whichever it is it's more than fast enough to run Windows 95 and will probably run Windows 98 pretty well. So rather amazingly, this computer's battery still holds some charge. I'm just going to move my microphone a little closer so you can hear this hard disk. Ah, the familiar sound of Windows 95 boot up sequence. As you can hear from the hard disk, there is a lot of clicking going on. And this makes me suspicious that this particular disk is going to die imminently. So with that in mind, obviously I need to change the hard disk. Before we do, we're just going to have a look at what's currently on here. So let's have a look at the start menu and see what programs we've got pre-installed. So this hasn't been reset, I don't think, since it was originally manufactured. So we've got a spelling application, the usual accessories, some CompuServe software, some expert map software, presumably needing the CD, Explorer, of course, some reference stuff, various internet options, including an AOL free trial. We've got QuickTime, Sun Clock, a couple of Toshiba accessories, some Toshiba utilities, Tranexit 2, whatever that might be, and a virtual key, which presumably is internet related as it talks about accounts and sites. Then we've got all the usual things and we've actually got Office 97 installed. We also have Coral Office installed on here. If we head up to accessories and system tools, we can have a look at the disk space. So as you can see, we've only got 82 megabytes free out of our 740 odd megabyte hard disk. So not only is the hard disk preparing to die on me, there's not a lot of space on there anyway. So before we clone this disk, there is one question that absolutely needs to be answered. And that of course is, can we run Doom? So with a resounding yes, it's time to remove the hard disk and see about cloning it. So before we open up the libretto, the most important thing, of course, is to disconnect the power supply and, of course, the battery. So the hard drive is located at this end and you just need to remove these two screws to get to it. Like so. And then we can see there's the end of the hard drive. So we just give it a tug. And out it comes. So now we've removed the hard disk from the libretto, I'm going to use a hard drive dock in order to transfer the contents to my computer. To clone the drive, I'm using the free version of Aomi Backupper. So once you plug the drive in, all we need to do is start up Aomi Backupper. Select the drive you want to clone. In this case, it's F. Choose a destination folder and then hit start. This is going to take a little while, so have a cup of tea and relax. <music> now
Now that I've imaged the drive for cloning, I'm also going to make a copy of the full file system of the drive. And this is so that later when I do a restore of Windows 95, I've got access to all the DIL files and installation files that are currently installed as I know that these work. Okay, so next up we need a suitable compact flash card. So any compact flash cards that's UDMA compatible will work in this situation. The early versions of Windows 95 won't deal with large hard disks due to the FAT16 file system. Later versions get around this issue, but for my purposes, I'm going to use a one gigabyte compact flash card. Given that Windows 95 itself for a full install only takes 37 meg, this is gonna be more than enough space. And even when I've installed Office, I fully expect to have two or 300 megs left over. The compact flash card I bought was very cheap. It's a Chinese import. And as you can see from this disk benchmark, it's not the fastest. But again, Windows 95 doesn't particularly expect very fast recall, so it's fine. If you were going to install XP on this, well, one, it's too small, but two, it would be far too slow. You would need a much faster compact flash card. Indeed, I do have Windows XP running off a compact flash card on one of my little netbooks. Um, and for that, I chose a Lexa Media 800 times speed compact flash card, and it runs quite well. So although cloning the hard disk should mean that when we rewrite it to the compact flash card, it makes the compact flash card bootable. In my experience, this doesn't always work. So for belt and braces, I'm going to use Rufus 3.5 to make sure that the compact flash card is bootable. To do this, open Rufus, make sure you've selected selected the correct drive. I don't want you erasing a drive you need. I'm going to use the free DOS installation. Select MBR for master boot record, then select BIOS, although this should be selected by default. Down at the bottom, make sure you've set it to a FAT16 file system or just FAT, and then hit start. This will rewrite the drive so that if it's plugged into a computer, it'll be bootable. So now it's time to restore the image to the compact flash card. Once again, very straightforward, simply select the correct image, then select the compact flash card, hit restore, and off we go. Go get another cup of tea. So now we've made the compact flash card bootable and cloned the drive to it, we want to make use of the rest of the space on the drive. So all we're gonna do is open up mini tool partitions. Once again, make sure you select the correct drive, choose the extend option, and then use the slider to optimize the size you want. Once that's done, hit okay and apply. Wait for it to finish, you should now have a one gigabyte drive. So now we've cloned the hard disk, we've put it on the compact flash card, we need to pop it back in the machine. So I have an adapter which will convert it to an IDE pin. So there is a slight issue with the adapter that I've chosen and that is that the three pins on the side, which are the jumper to make it a master or a slave drive, are a little bit too long and they make it thicker than the hard drive from the libretto. So obviously I need to clip them, but then the jumper tag won't stay on. So what I've done is simply flip the board over and soldered the forward two pins together. Now let's see about installing it in the libretto. Obviously this isn't going to slide in like the hard disk did since we're never going to be able to reach the pins at this end in the machine because we only have access through this door. So we're going to have to remove a few more screws. And there we have it. First of all, let's pop the compact flash card in. Just bear in mind, we're not gonna have access to this compact flash card once we've put the unit back together without once again removing the back plate. Also, we don't want it to come loose during use. So I'm gonna use one of these double-sided foam tabs to make sure that once it's in, it's not gonna move. Make sure you line up the pins carefully as you don't want to bend them as you put them in. We're in, press it down. Lovely, let's get the card ejection unit lined up properly and put it back together. It's 
check it's sealed all the way around. And let's put some screws back in. Battery back in and see if it works. And it sounds much quieter this time on startup, thanks to removal of that mechanical hard disk. There we have it, just as we left it. We'll just check the accessories and make sure that we can see the rest of the drive. And there we have it, instead of 80 odd meg from before, we've now got 345, all looking good. So now I have a fully working libretto with a backup of the drive and no fear of this drive failing in the near future. The next thing is to try and reset the system to something like factory original. The difficulty with this is unlike a PDA, a Scion or a Windows CE device, I can't simply remove the batteries and do a hard reset. Yeah, I could uninstall all the files, but as you will know with any experience of Windows 95, you can uninstall things, but there are always bits left behind, and some of those do interfere with the natural running of the operating system. So instead I need to do a fresh install. The Libretto 50CT can't boot to a CD drive, it doesn't have a USB connection, so it needs to boot to a floppy. It just so happens though that Ian has supplied me with a complete set of Windows 95 install disks. So once I've checked their integrity, I may well use those to reinstall Windows 95 and reset the system. If, as I suspect they are, the disks are corrupt, I'll probably simply download a copy off the internet and reinstall it via a virtual machine. So there is one other thing. And that is that when I cloned the disk and had a little bit of a look through the files left over, there were several files relating to 2000 or earlier. So these have clearly been on the device um, pretty much since it was built and have never been erased, which is that if you're going to sell a computer, you need to erase any sensitive information. There are lots of free secure file shredders out there, so you can shred individual files, but in general, I would suggest if you are going to sell a computer, you should completely erase the hard disk by overwriting it with ones and zeros, and then do a clean install rather than just deleting things and where they can often be recovered or even just found in the recycling bin if you're that lazy. Perhaps you've had a second-hand computer or bought memory cards and you've discovered things on there that perhaps shouldn't be there. I certainly have. I've bought memory cards in the past when I lived in New Zealand and discovered lots of information about the New Zealand road system. I had a compact flash card which contained holiday snaps. So I'd love to hear about your experiences below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And for those libretto users out there, I'd love to know what you're using yours for. As always, my name's Hugh. This is Handheld Computing. Thanks for watching.